This is Ryan Elliott for Boxing Social in association with Bedford. We're in London today. It's open workout today with me, trainer Shane McGuigan. Shane, how are you? Good, thanks, Ryan, mate. How are you? I'm good, thank you for asking. Busy times for you at the minute. Uh, got the Azim brothers doing the workout today. Caroline Dubois as well enjoying it. Yeah, good, mate. It's at their, their embryonic stage of their career. They're just starting out, so uh, nice to see them getting some attention this early on in their career. But look, there's a couple of a couple of great prospects that I've got there, and uh, this is just the start of their journey. You've worked with fighters from the very beginning, you've worked with fighters at the later stages of their career, like George Groves. How does it compare for you being able to build something from scratch when you could have a fighter come in as an amateur and you could work with them all the way through? Yeah, we were actually just chatting on the group chat about, I think Mikey McKinson just has put out saying that he boxed for a £1,000 for his first 10 fights or something. And it's funny because uh, Robbie Davies has also come from small hall shows, CBS as well. We had him on small hall uh, ticket deals down in Bournemouth as well. So it's nice to see um, th these fighters, Caroline, Adam and Hassan, they don't understand how lucky they got it because they've got a good contract there with a good platform. Um, and, you know, they, they're straight in to sort of this sort of exposure. And, and, and that's the thing. It's like, it's great to take them from scratch to to the top like I did with like Frampton and, and Taylor and CBS is not quite at the top yet but he's getting there um, it's nice to take them on from the start do you know what I mean um, but also um, nice to work with fighters that have you know like Lawrence that have, has found his way to my gym or, or George that found his way to my gym and stuff like that it's nice to work with all sides of things sometimes when they're like Robbie Davies or they're like George and stuff they appreciate your time a little bit more because they've been in other circles and and realise that you know they, they've got it sweet in this gym. Other times, they've been molly coddled from the start, and they get to the top, and they don't realise how good they've got it um, until they've left. But it's it is just the the part and parcel of boxing in life, and uh, you know like, it's nice to have these kids coming in. Hassan started with me. Adam had one fight before, um, but it was re you know he's re relatively started. And Caroline's having her first, his sec her second fight. She had her first fight with me, so it's going to be nice. I I'm going to enjoy this process again. I, I actually at one stage I sat back and thought maybe I'll just sit and wait for fighters to sort of not fail, but sort of you know find out and realise they need a, a more established coach or, or need a bit more direction and come to me at the top. <laughs> But I thought at the same time you're still, you're you're you're, you're uh, working off their bad habits and trying to correct them so far down the line. It's nice to get them when they're so fresh and, and uh, impressionable. With young talented fighters, there can sometimes be an eagerness from them to to want to rush through the levels. You've got so much time with the likes of the Azims and Caroline. They're so young. Are they pretty accepting of the fact there's no rush here? Plenty of time to just work on things and take it easy. Yeah, but look, I mean, if they have the talent, then we'll push them on. Like Adam, we're pushing him on quick. Um, you know, uh, Hassan, we're going to take our time. Look, he's got plenty of talent. He just is going to take more time to fill into his frame, understand boxing a bit more. Um, but even with, with Adam, we've still got to rein him back. We've still got to make sure we're having the right fights at the right time. You know, um, we've got a pretty good knack when it comes to managing fighters and navigating their careers through. You know, we had Josh Taylor box David Ryan in his seventh fight. Um, Lee McGregor box Thomas Asomba in his fifth fight when he was with us. Do you know what I mean? won the Commonwealth, stopped his opponent in the 12th round of his fifth fight. That's an amazing achievement. Um, but, you know, with um, with uh, with other fighters, you might have to take them a little bit slower. Um, and it's always a risk. It's always a gamble. You don't know how well they're going to perform on the, on the big stage. Um, and that's just down to the matchmaking. It's down to the, to the management. Um, and, and look, that's that's it. It's always risk or reward. But... Um, yeah, we're going to be pushing them on at the speeds that we believe they, they, can, they can go at. So we're on Chris Bill and Smith. I know there was a bit of disappointment about not getting the Turchy fight, which Rekbo's no longer getting either by the looks of things. The McCarthy rematch, though, a, a big fight. And after that first fight, Chris has openly admitted he can be, perform so much better than that. Is this a perfect opportunity for him to prove that? Yeah, I think, look, you know, we don't need to go over this old ground, but, you know, we're kind of men of our word and we said that we would we'd give him a rematch because it was a reasonably close fight but also mainly because Chris wants to knock him out and wants to beat him up and do a much better job than he did the first time and I believe he's so much better than what he showed um, so uh, it's it's yeah it's it's going to be a nice night but it's, it's also let's not let's not make any mistake it's still a tough fight but you at this st stage of his career he's not going to get no gimmies he's going to have no handouts you know you're going to have to have have uh, hard fights from here on in. He's he's number one at, in the IBF, so he's uh, oh, he's number one in the IBF. So he's he's 
he's, he's in that position. That light of yours is playing up, isn't it? <laughs> Do I turn off? <laughs> we don't need it. I think I've got enough light there anyway. That's, is that better? Now we're good. Now we're good, sound. <laughs> You said, uh, Chris, one of his reasons for wanting this fight is he, he wants to knock him out. Do you believe he will stop him this time? Tommy's a, Tommy's a tough lad. He can, get, he can get hit and hurt, but he's savvy enough to basically uh, get through rounds. And when he is buzzed and hurt, he's able to sort of hold him. But Riakpo uh, is a fantastic puncher, and, and he has that levers to be able to... that, that leverage to be able to knock him out um, over the top of that lean back. So it's, it's going to be... I think he could get to him. I think he definitely could stop him. But you know, um, we, we're going to go out and try and try and win the fight. But Chris knows he can he can hurt him and dent him, and uh, you yeah, know he's he's confident that he can do it. But if it was down to me, I'd just say, look, just beat him up. If the stoppage comes, stoppage comes. Lawrence Coley, just a little reflection after his win over Cizlak. He openly admitted after the fight that he'd, he'd came into camp, into camp a bit too heavy, left himself a bit too much to do. Is that a lesson learned for him? Yeah, I mean, look, boxing comes so easy to Lawrence. I think like he just thinks of it as like a game sometimes. He just thinks, you know, I let myself go as heavy as I can. I'm starting this new fitness app. I'll start, you know, I'll do this in double quick time. But it's not about that. Uh, it's about performing and it's about you know being an athlete. He is massive for cruiserweight, and he can't maintain that weight all year round. So um, he has to let his body blow a little bit, but he can't be going up that heavy because it's just it's not it's not on. So. Um, Look, you know, he's a, he's a, he's, we, we've sat down, we've talked about things that he could have done right, could have done wrong, and like, he did a lot of things. If you look back, people can scrutinise him, but that was a great fight until seven rounds in, you know, and then it became a bit messy down the stretch. Now, as much as people, look, because it got messy, they could look back on the first seven and say, do you know what, it was still scrappy early on, but there wasn't. There was clean punches landed, there was good exchanges happening, and they were maintaining that distance. Sometimes Lawrence was getting a bit eager, trying to, trying to chin him, falling in, smothering his work, but it was a competitive fight where Lawrence was getting the better of him the whole way to seven, and then it became you know, sloppy uh, down the stretch, and I think when the two of them were trying more, it was getting, it got getting more messy. But they're always going to label Lawrence under that umbrella oh well, you made it sloppy but actually it says that that was trying to trying to rush in and it's just a clash of styles um, annoyingly he'd been on a seven fight knockout spree and we had some fantastic wins but they're always going to revert back to oh look at the Isaac Chamberlain fight look at the Matty Askins fight and they were bad fights but he knocked seven people out you can't scrutinise him for that because that's a guy that's coming there to try and change his life and will do any means but he must have hit him 200, 200 times on the back of the head yeah. like it was it was horrendous like there was there were certain things that went on and I just think like yeah Lawrence was smothering his work but the other guy was hitting around the back of the head he didn't want to exchange sometimes because he thought he was going to hit on the break it was like there's lots of things that, that was going on and it was just a messy fight but annoying because I know that Lawrence if he boxed him again or even if he even if you brought him in for sparring, I know knock, uh, Lawrence would knock him out in the gym. And it's just like, so annoying because he's, he's better than that. But he needs to be more active. Um, and he can't be active if he's blowing up to that silly weight. Um, so he either you know, had dabbles at heavyweight or he, or he gets a, one unification um, and, and just has a couple of, has a couple of targets in, in mind. So it's not just like, win this one, something's coming next. And then when is it? Is it... December is it February is it March is it May when is that date you know don't worry it's coming and then he just keeps he just keeps eating <laughs> he just keeps being out you know not out the gym he's still ticking over but you know he's, he's a big lad he likes his likes his food so he's you know as a kid he was heavy so it's just we need to have dates we need to have everything locked in and he, he needs to be made like the center of attention and you know I also said to him like after performances like that you need to know that you you could who could have got that guy out of there down the stretch, you know? Uh, but he coasted a, little, coasted a little bit, and, you know, to put on a show, to put on a performance, to be made the centre of attention, sometimes you have to go out and go in above and beyond and, and get those knockouts. That mind, you said he needs structure and he needs to be active and, and have things to aim for. Have those discussions begun already about when he could be back and against who? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, like, you know, we're, uh, yeah, we're all in communication. So, look, I mean, I think... Macabre was sitting there waiting for the Canelo fight. The fact that Canelo has gone to Bivol, I think that's a great fight that we can make right now. Uh, can he do a better job than Tony Belli? Probably not, because 
Belly fucking knocked him out so fantastically. And but you know, he's if he if he beats him, if he gets the knockout, if he if he wins, it's it's a unification. So that's uh, that's what we want. We want we want the cheat. Like at the end of the day, you can look back on someone's career on paper on that box track and say world champion British champion Commonwealth champion European champion unified world champion moves up to heavyweight dumps something like that's where we want to be like you know that's, that's, the, that's the thing you want, you want to make uh, big statements a couple more before I let you go uh, Wood Conlon on the weekend dramatic um, hard to believe what we saw Lee Wood putting Mick Conlon out the ring in the last round after being in serious trouble early doors how do you sum up what we saw on Saturday Amazing, amazing fight. What a fantastic fight. Both of them really went out. I mean, the fact that Wood was still marching forward, tactics there was, went out the window. He just was throwing, throwing punches. It, 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 we just said it earlier on. We were saying, what's, what's with those Nottingham lads? Do you know what I mean? They just sort of back someone up to the ropes, go square and just start punching from their hips. Uh, you know, there's just no, there's, there's no thought process behind it, but they're heavy handed and they just get the fucking results. So they grit it out. He doesn't have the durability and the toughness that someone like um, Carl Froch does, but he was hurt to the head, obviously badly hurt for the first four rounds. Every time he was getting clipped by Conlon, he was legs were dipping, hurt to the body after that, and then just dug in and, and, and you know, Conlon, I, I, I struggled to look at them scorecards because it, 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 I thought he was so far ahead. You know, I, 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 I worry once again, we, we're not even talking about that. I worry the fact that if he'd have lost that last round, it would have been a majority draw. Like, that's horrendous. Like, he, look, he didn't, he got, the fact that he got scored a knockdown made it closer but it, it, it shouldn't have been that close so he was winning those those mid rounds were, were Lee Wood was backing him up throwing lots of punches it wasn't clean work it was Conlon that was that was in control of it he was slipping he was coming back he was controlling the pace he boxed really well um, Lee Wood was way out of his depth and just come back from the fucking depths and just literally chinned him and it was it was it was amazing to see you know what I mean it was uh, you know mix an outspoken kid and you know, it, 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 sometimes he says things that he shouldn't say. And you know, it, when you when you put yourself out like that, a bit like when David A puts himself out like that, and you get knocked out, like or something happens, it's it comes back to bite you. But that's that's the people they are. So that's that's what happened. I've seen a couple of times in the last couple of weeks in the boxing ring where a fighter could have been pulled out. I know Ben Davison had the towel in his hand when Lee Wood went back out for the second round. We saw Jordan Gill a couple of weeks ago as well that was in serious trouble before he got the stoppage. How difficult is it as a trainer in that situation? And how much do you have to know your fighter as well to let them carry on when they're hurt like that? You've got to know that they've always got a puncher's chance. Like, if they're a puncher and, they, and, they, and they've got, you know, even if they've got vulnerabilities that they're, that they're getting buzzed, you've always got to think that they've got a puncher's chance. Uh, you know, and, that, and that's the thing, that's the beauty about being a puncher, because you can switch a fight like that. Um, so both of those lads did the right thing, leaving their fighters in there. Um, you know, Jordan Gill, we obviously were on late, later on, so we didn't see it, but I, I, I watched the finish and I thought, wow, um, you know what I mean? But it's just amazing. It's, it's just amazing. That's, that's the beauty of boxing. It can get flipped in, in this matter of seconds. You can box perfectly for 11 and a half rounds and you get knocked out in the last minute and a half. And it's, you know what I mean? And people forget that. People see it and they just see it on the social medias or they see it on the, on the box rec. Oh, wait, he got chinned in the last. But it's like you could have put on the best masterclass, but that's the beauty of boxing. That's one before I let you go, Shane, because you've got this workout coming up very soon. Anthony Joshua, it looks like he is going to have an interim bout now, a few names being banded about, the likes of Joe Joyce. What do you think is a logical next step for Anthony with Usyk not being able to fight for the foreseeable? It's good for him. It's, I mean, it's, if, as long as he doesn't lose that uh, rematch um, clause um, and he gets a chance to have a, have a bout, that's great for him. You know, his confidence is down. He's, with, he's, just, he's not changed from a new trainer. The guys are still... But he's been given that full sole uh, role of looking after the camp and uh, you know you've got to go out there and make sure that you you listen to the one voice you respect it you give everything towards that trainer and if you're in against someone like Joe Joyce he'll beat Joe Joyce beat him up uh, I don't even think it will go three four rounds because he's knocked him out twice in the amateurs he's so confident that he'll beat him up that that's a good position for Anthony Joshua to 
to get himself back in the mix. Uh, not just in a mix, but on top, feeling invincible. That's what he needs to do, because he's an aggressive attacking fighter. He's been trying to fucking overcomplicate shit for too long. Um, get back out. Joe Joyce won't allow you to overcomplicate things. He's right in front of your face. You're going to have to let your hands go. Um, and if he does so he's, so, he's far too quick for Joe Joyce. It'll, it'll beat him up, probably knock him out. So if that's the case, his confidence will go sky high and he's going to go into the rematch with Usyk with a lot of confidence. So I think it's a good thing. That's what Anthony took to Twitter, um, broke a rare silence to, to laugh off suggestions that he wouldn't want to fight or take a Joe Joyce fight. Do you think people are now underestimating him, if anything, underrating him after what we saw in the Usyk fight? It's only, it's only not normal, it's only human to under, underestimate somebody after they've lost. Like, you know, he's been knocked out and then he's been outboxed. So they, they you know, that whole invincible fucking uh, slogan, you know, that, that people would have put on him, think, oh, you know, He's just so powerful. He's so quick. He's so like determined. All of that stuff it comes it comes into question. But it can also go the other way because you can think, oh, this guy isn't what he what he once was, and then Bing, he's, you know, he's because he's got the power and the speed to knock anybody out. He just needs to believe in it. All right, Shane. Thank you for speaking to Boxing Social. Catch you soon.